say. All righty. Hello. It's me, and I'm going to make my neighbors think I'm a little nuts by coming to you live in my front yard. Um, so if you're new to Facebook and our live classes, I'm going to go over the rules. But, ah, okay, I have a signal. So it's me, Deborah, from the Center for Enhancing Abilities. I'm out of the Bergen location, but our videos and uh, classes are open to all members from all three uh centers which i usually do get i do get some people from all different centers so here is my assistant it is simon who is how are you doing today good yeah we're a little down we're a little down it's spring break and we're not really doing anything uh for spring break so good oh i got a lot of people on at once so today is science so welcome and just a reminder to our wonderful viewers our millions of fans um, if you're on, yeah, Jamie, good morning. Jamie says hello to you, Simon. Why don't you give Jamie a shout out? Hi. Hi, yeah, he's, he's been assigned to the other things. Let's say I got Katie on. I think I got David on. Uh, good, 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 good. I got some different people on, so I'm excited to have you all on. I guess the weekend was just so incredibly boring that you're all desperate to sign in for science at 1030 on a Monday. Maybe, maybe. I get it. So today is our science day. Um, usually at the Bergen Center, we usually have science on Mondays, um, usually in the afternoon, but I do it in the morning. I figure we're all, uh, hey, Doug, what's up, man? Good to see you. And Caitlin, boy, we got a whole crew. We got a lot of people. You all must have been truly, truly desperate to join in for science. So hopefully my project will not disappoint you. Um, each day or each class, I try to go to different spaces um, to make you feel like we're not enclosed. So today I'm in my front yard um, because right now it's a pretty sunny place. And that's where you're going to think about for your own um, experiment. This is something you can do. Um, and in a minute, we're going to send Simon off with some marching orders to get supplies for us. Um, but we're going to be talking about sundials and can you make your own sundial and will it be accurate? Um, so far, I have found no. Um, but, you know, who else we got? Ooh, we got April's on. Excellent, April. So excited. We got Alex. So we got Alex. We got April. We got Caitlin. We got Doug. We got David J, I think. We got Katie B. We got Jamie. So we got a whole bunch of people in. So awesome. Awesome. I'm expecting a few others to jump in as well. So it is sundials today. All righty. So Simon, come right in. Come right back in. You're going to get your your marching orders and it's Simon. Hey, we might even have Nikki P on. So good, good. Hopefully he's up and a happy birthday. I believe a happy birthday to Nikki P. Everybody wish him a happy birthday. 24 years young. Let more if I'm more than twice his age, which is really sad. So, I mean, it's good, but you know, that I've lived this long, but it's, you know, makes me feel old. All righty. Good morning. Good morning. Happy birthday to Nick. Um, so today it's about sundials. Now, um, this part you won't be able to necessarily do today, Simon, because were we up at seven o'clock? Come in, um, come in. They can't see you or hear you. I woke up at, I think, eight or eight. Okay, so this is maybe not a good project for teenagers or preteens. Um, hi, how are you? <laughs> People are gonna think I'm weird talking to myself. Um, because you to really do this project you have to have somebody outside at probably around seven o'clock in the morning no problems please tell them i wish my happy birthday so but what i like about this project is it gets you outside every hour of the day remember we were talking about all these different strategies about how to reduce stress and how to deal with social distancing and boredom and uncertainty Getting out is one of these things combined with nature. So if you do this project, you will have to have yourself or someone that you don't like assigned to go outside and set this up each hour. So we're going to do a, a sundial two different ways and um, you can do this. You could do this. All right. So here we go. So for the small sundial, what you're going to need, 
Oh goodness, Simon, I might have you hand me these things. So what you might need, what you're going to need is, and I'll make this accessible, is you are going, hey, I think Jeter's on. So you are going to need a, um, a printable paper template. Okay, that's what you're gonna need. I'll make sure you have access to it. Um, you can either use a piece of cardboard cut out in a circle, all right, or a plate. I'm using a lid um, from my Chinese takeout. Something like that to hold the paper, okay? You are going to um, need scissors. You are going to need, I guess you don't need to see my big butt, but you can, need, you can use like clay or um, glue, okay? Simon, can you find me a, a straw, one of the straws? And you can use a stick, a pencil, or um, I'm using a straw. Thank you, missing Simon. Or a straw, something like that, whatever you've got handy. These are all things that you absolutely probably have around your house. And maybe a glue stick if you're um, cutting this out and putting it on cardboard. It'll make sense in a second. All right, now. For the big project, for the outdoor project, and that's where Simon comes in. So Simon, come here, please. Um, and just so you all know, this is what you're going to be making, okay? This is a paper sundial, okay? And uh, let's see, you'll put it there. Okay, good. Now, what, Simon, come in here, please, for a second. The next thing you're going to need, here, nobody can see you, which maybe is what you want. We need for outdoor, wow, you look taller than me. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Um, how'd that happen? What you're going to need is some rocks. All right. Now you can go to the dollar store and buy them. That would be silly. It would be a waste of a dollar maybe because we're going to send Simon out. And if a few minutes, maybe we'll go out and look with him. We need some pebbles. You could use pebbles. I like a rock, you know, a couple inches big. So we need some rocks, Simon. We're going to need about, we need, I have four here. You need about 12, okay? Uh, the Greek gods didn't use, so Caitlin sharing some information with us. The Greeks didn't use sundials until 293 BC or BCE for the cooler, hipper people. In my day, it was just BC or AD or whatever. So Simon, you need to go and get some rocks, okay? I'm going to give you a basket to collect your rocks. We're also going to need a large stick. So do you think you can go find them while I work through the craft itself? Okay. So Simon is out um, foraging for rocks. Um, another thing you can forage for, um, which would be really cool, is there are things in your yard. Um, well, maybe we should use caution. But um, this is when dandelions come up and you can harvest uh, the leaves of the dandelions um, when they first come up in the spring to put them in a salad. So let me know if you think that's gross or delicious. I personally don't like dandelions, but um, that's up to you. So, oh my goodness. So hopefully we'll have birds flying in and whatever. So we're outside. So the first thing that we're going to do for our paper craft is we are going I don't have a table. Actually, I do. I do have a table, like a little portable one, but I didn't think to put it out here. Oh, well. So you will get, you can, if you're really desperate and you don't want to wait for my link, you can go online and type in sundial um, templates um, and you can get one. Um, or you can just wait uh, for my Google Classroom and my links that I'm going to send to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm taking this big huge bird coming to take me away um, it's probably like why are you in my space so what I'm doing as you can see is I am cutting out my circle now you can make them you can make them yourselves if you're really crafty um, but I really kind of like just making the Sun I don't know how accurate this is because so far what I've, I've been using this and it, it's it's not correct it's like off by half an hour so my clock is slow. And if anybody knows me, I like to keep my clocks fast. I usually keep my clock, does anybody know who's been in my car? How many minutes fast? 10 minutes, 10 minutes. All right, so Simon has gotten some rocks for us. 
and a stick. Do you want to go see if you can get a bigger stick, a longer stick? We need a stick, Simon. Um, this is a good thing, probably about maybe a foot to two feet. We want a big stick. We want a big stick. Uh, what is that? What was that quote? Does anybody know from FDR? March softly or carry a big stick. I don't know. Anybody know that? Um, so we've got some rocks. That's for our other one. All right. So we used our scissors and we cut out our template. Okay. Now to make mine, I, uh, this'll do, this'll do, this'll do. I also have something else that we can use. Okay, great. So Simon is going, Simon, can you also do me a favor? Can you go onto the front porch and get me that little container, that bag with the blue, the blue bag? The blue bag? Sorry. We should have worked this out, but Simon was sleeping late. So we have a template. You can get lots of them online. Um, and, um, but I will use this one. The next, so we cut it out. You can cut out a piece of cardboard. That's what I did for my other ones. Speak softly and carry a big stick. Thank you, Caitlin. I don't know what I would do without my smart people here. All right, cool, cool. So we've got um, a table. Oop, I left it out in the rain. That's another song. Have you ever heard that song, Simon? Something about a recipe and a cake. I left my cake out in the rain. Well, I left my table out in the rain and I'll never have that recipe again. All right, so I got a nice cool table here. So the next thing you're going to do is you can take a piece of cardboard and cut out a circular, uh, talk softly and carry a big stick. I think, yes, I think we all agree. It would be very effective, I would think. Ooh, I have like a comb over here. All right, so if you don't have cardboard, oops, I lost my assistant in the woods. You can use a plate, you can use a paper plate. You can do these with paper plates um, or any type of container to kind of hold it. You will need, if it's especially windy, some additional rocks to kind of like put it down and hold it down, okay? That's what you will need. So if you wanna glue it to cardboard, you wanna glue it to a paper plate, you just wanna leave it on a plate, it's totally cool, it's, it's totally up to you. So I have one that's cardboard and I have one that I'm gonna use on a plate okay or a tin okay so the next thing you're going to do is you're going to either use a pencil uh, or a straw um, you could use a stick now um, and I forgot what the heck the thing was called a uh, noma noman so for most traditional um, for for most traditional sundials that we see they have like this little triangular p like this little triangle that sits on it if you want to do that, you can. You can use paper and you could fold it into a triangle as such. So let's see. I'm, gonna, I'm just taking one and very easy to make one. I'm just gonna cut it. So I took a piece of paper, like a square, I folded it once. And I folded it again to make this kind of shape, okay? That you can use. That is a special type of, um, uh, what do you call it, thing that comes up, a protrusion, I don't know. Uh, uh, G-N-O-N-O-M, I think is what it's called. And that piece, if you wanna go that way, okay, that would be faced would be glued onto your thing there. See how that works? Now, when you use this little triangle though, you wanna make it big enough so the sun will reflect on it. Um, but you have to have your sundial, when you use this particular type of apparatus as the shadow casting piece, you have to sh have it face true north. We are um, really lame. We don't have, we can't find our um, compass. We could use our phone. So we don't know where True North is. We just don't know. So what we're going to do is, that's why on your project, working with the rocks, you have to come out every day at seven o'clock and know that's your seven o'clock um, time period. For us, we're just gonna use a large stick for our paper um, piece here. So you could use a pencil or a straw, okay? So I have a straw here. Uh, yes, as a counterweight, so it doesn't look like it's going to fly to Netherland. Yes, 
Yes, you're right. So I'm using, you can use putty, you can use glue, you can use a glue gun, you could use whatever you have. It has to be a little bit secure. We're gonna use a magic whatever. So I'm gonna cut a piece, just carefully not cutting my fingers. And what I'm going to do, I guess you could use mud, you could use cookie dough, I guess it's anything that'll stick. So, we're going to take this piece here and we're gonna put it right in the center. See how I have that? I just put my, my putty or my clay in the center. And then I'm gonna take my pencil and you're gonna need enough to make sure this thing stays in. And I'm gonna stick my pencil right in that hole that was in the center there, see? Okay, all right, so there's, and it goes right on the dot, okay? Very, very simple, very, very basic. You wanna make sure, maybe shape your clay or your putty so, so it's standing straight up. See how that is? That's all you need to make a sundial. That's it. Now, the idea is when we're placing this out, because we don't know true north, because I'm very bad with science and direction. I am uh, what we call a typical female, I know that's kind of sexist, but some people are done more by um, landmark navigation and some people are really good at direction and distance. And typically, I don't know if that will always be true, but some people say it's more of a, men have more of a natural instinct for direction and orientation, meaning directional stuff. I don't know if that's true. I'm a landmark person, so, I've been one place, I can find my way home. My family doesn't like that because they never seem to lose me. But I'm, I'm a different type of thing. I'm more of a forager. I look for landmarks. So I don't know where True North is. So if I was trapped in the woods, I might have a problem. Some people might here want to chime in and give us some hints as to how we would find certain directions because maybe you can find it by what, what object, which is relating to our project here like how the sun uh, rises and sets can give us a, an idea of direction, right? Right, yeah. So, and I wanna hear from you guys. So if you're new, coming on late, we are in our science class. I'm Deborah. I've got Simon somewhere around here searching for stuff that we're going to need to set up an outdoor. Yeah, well, I think we've got, we got pretty much, I mean, we could have used even a bigger stick, even a bigger stick. Uh, you know, we got bears once in a while over here. So um, we're working on sundials. How can we make one in the house to use outside or how can we use one with no materials that if we just went outside? So this is our paper sundial. And what you do is you are going to, and I recommend do this early in the morning at about seven o'clock and you're going to sit it outside. So I'm gonna pick you up now. And you can see my sundial, right? Now, right now, this is saying, based on, let's see, where am I? It's hard for me to see. Hold on. Let me see if I can. No, let's see. So, okay. There we go. I think you got it. No? There we go. Okay. Right now, my sundial, you're all probably like dizzy, like, whoa. My sundial is saying it's about 11 o'clock. Um, well, uh, it's a little bit before 11, my sundial. My sundial is saying it's uh, maybe about 5 to 11. I don't know. Anybody want to check your watches? All right. You're getting thin sticks. You're getting thin sticks. So I'm not sure how accurate this is. It seems to be moving fast and it seems to be moving slow. But the idea was I put this down at about nine o'clock and um, or you put it down at a particular time and match up the shadow that's casting from your straw to the time that it is. So let me see here. So here's my sundial. Here, Simon, can you do me a favor? Can you hold this for us so we can do this? Okay, make sure that doesn't slip. So here's our shadow here. So let's say, um, it's hard, but let's say this is the shadow coming in here, okay? And that's really saying it's between six and seven o'clock if that's where our shadow was coming in. So that's, yeah, yeah, Katie, it's about 11 minutes off, yeah. 
Maybe that's why either people in the past were always early or very late. I don't know. I'm a stickler for time, so I'm going to stick with my iWatch. All right? Um, but could you imagine that you didn't have any clock? And this is an interesting thing, talking about this time of social distancing and not in our usual um, schedules. How does it make you feel that time is, is different for us right now? We're not keeping to a regular schedule. For some of us who are, are coming in, yeah, we, it, it does help. But how does that make you feel that you're not on your usual timeline? So, or you might not be in your usual space. There's been experiments done on people where they give them, they deprive them of, of time, of letting, they don't have a clock, they don't have anything. How does that make you feel? Um, in retail, when you go shopping, if you notice stores don't have clocks, to make sure that you don't know that you've been in the store for an hour and shopping, you're gonna spend more money. So time is a really interesting thing for us humans. Um, we kind of need it and crave it. Some of us don't care. Um, if you're a person that's always early, let me know. If you're a person that's on time, like I am, I really try to be on time. Or if you're a person, oops, Simon is taking some things out of here. Um, or if you're a person that's notoriously late, let me know. It's just different, different kinds of people. So when you're putting your, um, one more time, Simon, here, hold this again. We're going to do this. Sorry, we need a, we need a three-man uh, crew for our science class. Thank you, Simon. Okay, let's see. Christian, good morning. Good morning. You woke up at nine. It is a beautiful day. That's why we're out here, man. Hey, let me know. Oh, no, you don't go to Dunkin' until Tuesday. Too. Yeah, you, Simon woke up at nine as well, but I have a feeling Christian is a little bit more active at nine than, than you and I. So here, no, wait, don't let it lay flat. Let it lay flat. Let it lay flat because we got to do this. So as you can see, wait, hold on. There's the we can't see too well. There's where the shadow is cast. So that would be saying between seven and eight uh, o'clock um, for our thing. Now, this is going to work on a 12 hour um, time because essentially we don't have, uh, some of you might ask, hey, Deborah, you said to Simon get like 12 rocks. Why didn't you tell him to get 24 rocks? There's 24 hour, it's a 24 hour day. Um, what's up with that? So one of the big reasons, if anybody can figure it out, is we don't need rocks for every hour of the day because there's no sun and every hour of the day. So we're just going to make a clock that runs the 12 hours because essentially that's probably where most of our sunlight is going to be. That's how it works. So now we're going to make a sundial with no paper, no straw, we're going to make it as if we were dropped into the woods to survive like predator Arnold Schwarzenegger. And we're going to make a sundial using rocks and a stick. Can we do it? And will it be accurate? I have no idea. And I really doubt its accuracy. So let's try this. Let's do this. Okay. So there's landscapers apparently in the world of predator. Alrighty. So we need, we need Simon. I don't know where he went. Simon. All right, there he is. He's don't get stung by bees. All right. So here we go. We are going to set up a one of these Simon on the ground. Okay, we're going to put it on the ground. So for you moving on to our second uh, sundial. No, okay. Yeah, that one it doesn't matter. Just don't touch that one because right now it's saying it's about 11 o'clock. My sundial. It's, it, I think it's off. It's off. So we'll check in with you from time to time with the time. So we need 12 rocks to start. And we're going to show you how you would do this each hour of the day. All right. So we're going to try to move our, um, our, our stand, our cameraman. Uh, maybe we could put in one of these gopher holds. Okay. Well, that doesn't work. Okay. Hold on. So this is a time... Here we go. It's 11. All right, cool. Okay. Whoop. All right, here we go. So you need to go out into your backyard and hey, how are you? How are you? Eileen, very good to see you. Um, and all of you, if you get a chance, wish Nikki P from the Bergen Center a happy birthday. It is his 24th birthday. And anybody, if it's your birthday, please send me a message or something. 
an email to let me know it's your birthday. Okay, so, or an anniversary, I don't know. Uh, hey Christian, in Amsterdam last April, I saw a sundial at Museum Park. Uh, I, I have never been to Amsterdam. I heard it's really cool, Christian. Um, and was the, do you know if the sundial was accurate? That's really the key. Are these sundials accurate? I know Caitlin chimed in a little bit. Katie has already told me, Katie B has told me my, uh, my sundial is not accurate. Um, yeah, I kind of knew that, um, but oh well. Um, but are they accurate? If you had somebody who really knew how to do this, not somebody like me off the streets, um, would they be accurate? And, you know, share that with us. So our next step is to not let our papers fly all over the place. We are going to now lay out our sum. We're going to show you how it was recommended to us. It was accurate. I asked your dad. Okay. Apparently they're better engineers than I am. I'm not an engineer. So there's that. So the first thing you need to do is you're going to collect about 12 rocks, okay? And a, uh, Simon, what happened to her stick? Now, all right, so Simon, I mean, I, he got me a stick. So if you were stuck in the woods, like Arnold Schwarzenegger, you could get some rocks and some sticks, okay? You don't need huge boulders. And some of you who know this, I've said this before, I live in Montvale, so there's always lots of rocks. We're known for rocks. Um, so I also took a really big um, uh, paintbrush. Now I know, our, you know, if I was in a desert, I wouldn't have this. Um, but you know, I, I took that in case we couldn't find a stick, even though we're like near the woods. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your stick. Make sure it's sturdy enough because you're going to have to stick it into the ground. Um, and that's kind of why I also grabbed this. So any kind of stick, uh, any kind of apparatus that's going to be long and stick into the ground, that'll be tough. Okay. So this stick, I was really hoping Simon would get me like something a little bit more heavy duty. You know, we were in the woods yesterday and we were getting some really big sticks. So, but this will do, this will do. Okay. The next thing is Simon, I'm going to need your help. Simon, Simon, don't, don't run into the woods. Please come back. Oh, he's getting another stick. He's getting another stick. You're going to get your rocks, okay? If you are a person that doesn't like to touch dirty rocks, either have someone else do this or wear some, um, some gloves or some mittens or something, okay? When you turn over rocks, take a moment. If you're digging them up out of the ground, take a moment to look underneath. Um, it's always fascinating. There's always weird, creepy crawlies under there, and it's a whole little microcosm of stuff going on. Um, that's a pretty big stick, bring it over bring it over don't don't yeah we'll figure it out so you've got your rocks and your stick um make sure it's a pretty straight stick um simon's got us like a weird stick out of all the sticks yeah here come on bring it over here bring it over here so the next thing that you're going to need is a sunny place all right all right this is the weirdest stick I've ever seen. Um, I, I, I love your ingenuity. One of the problems with this stick is it's going to make a lot of weird shadows because it has lots of faces sticking out. It's a great stick. We'll use it for something, I promise. But make sure it's kind of a level, kind of a straight kind of stick. That's what we want, okay? Now your next thing is you're gonna go and find, here, wait, I see, uh, I believe the system is ecosystem. <clears throat> yes, there are, we're a part of an ecosystem. Very good, uh, Caitlin. And there's other ecosystems all around us. That's today's task. If you haven't gone onto our Bergen um, CEA Facebook page, there is a task. Go to looking at, it's a science themed day. Go look at those live cams from the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Really cool stuff. There's like loads of them go in and look at them. They run pretty much all day. So I would tell you, there's jellyfish, there's uh, uh, like a reef or sea kelp, I think a sea kelp bed, something with otters, birds, you name it, it's in there, go look for it. Now, this is the key. Where is there a place in your yard or where you live that people aren't gonna stare at you for setting up a bunch of rocks? Um, or where is there going to be a place with sunshine? 
I'm in my front yard. I have um, a lot of good pockets of sun throughout my yard, but sometimes it's certain days because um, there's lots of trees, um, there's lots of things going on that they're a shaded area. For this really to work, we want a good sunny spot that has sun pretty much for the whole day from when the sun comes out to when the sun sets. So that can be tricky. Um, what, what the heck was that? Sounds like somebody has a horn making a sacrifice or something. Somebody, somebody has gas. I, we can think of all these jokes all day. Uh, hi, Brow Show. So, um, a sunny spot. I am in uh, an area in my front yard that I think overall pretty much gets sun throughout from, let's say, about 7 to when the sun finally goes down. If you have a spot that all the sun goes very shady at like three o'clock, you won't be able to use your sundial at that point and it'll be hard to maybe calibrate it as well. Calibrate, fancy term, meaning we want to test for its reliability and its accuracy, right? It's, it's accuracy. So that's why I'm going to check in from you from time to time. So hold on. My clock is saying, my sand uh, clock is saying it's just after 11 o'clock. Not bad, not bad. It's gotten a little improvement. And as you notice throughout the day, if we had a camera focusing on it, the shadow made from the straw or your pencil is going to be moving around the dial. So that's pretty cool, pretty cool. So let's do this. Simon, stop hitting things with that stick and let's lay down our um our rocks okay you ready so let me get my table what okay simon's working on the perfection so at one point we're going to drop you to, to the ground so you can see our how we're going to lay our rocks okay so you're going to see the bottom so we're choosing um you can see my weird house um, we're going to choose this space here. We like this space. This has a lot of sun throughout the day. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to put our stick into the ground. Okay. So I'm going to be working with, uh, Hey, I think we got Mark on. Hey, how's it going? My deck has a lot of sun. So Katie, your deck having a lot of sun may be a great place for you to put this paper sundial. Just make sure you use rocks so that it does not blow away. So some of you coming in late, just so you know, we're doing two different kinds of sundials, one with paper and a pencil and a straw. Okay. All right, and we're keeping track of time. Needs to be in a sunny place, right? And now we're gonna build one in our yard as if we are Arnold Schwarzenegger and we've been dropped into the, to the jungle or wherever and we have no art supplies whatsoever. And one of my neighbors is gonna be walking by. So Simon, come on, Simon. Simon, I lost him into the woods. Uh, that does happen with children from time to time. So Simon, okay, he's, I don't know where he's going, he's left. Hi, how are you? Yeah. <laughs> Hanging in there. Um, so see, this is good, guys. Uh, we're socially distancing, but we're still saying hello. <laughs> Sorry, I'm doing a video. <laughs> so. Here we go. We are going to stick our um, our stick into uh, the ground. Whoops. All right, so that didn't work. So let's see. I don't want to lose you all or get you dizzy. So I'm going to find a spot that has pretty much soft soil. Oh, here we go. You can see this. Okay. And I'm going to stick it into the ground. Okay. There we go. So I already broke my one stick that Simon got me. So let's see. Oh, Simon, Simon got another stick. Good. This is a great exercise for you to work on to get outside. This is a pretty good stick, Simon. I like this stick. I like this stick. So I made a little hole. I made a little hole, or I made a little dreidel, and I made it out of clay. Well, I'm making a little sundial, and I'm making it out of sticks and a rock. So I made... Yeah, it is less catchy. So here we go. We made a stick. Well, we didn't make the stick, but we have our stick in here. So Simon, can you do me a favor? Can you go stand in front of the stick so I can see? Okay. 
All righty, so here we go. You're gonna stand right, yeah, stand right behind it. Okay, so Simon is standing in front of our stick because it might be hard to see. All right, so we put that stick in. You want to get it in deep enough so that it doesn't like fall over or that those rotten, nasty squirrels don't pull it out or something like that. I mean, I have some really mean animals in my neck of the woods. They're really crazy. Don't sit on top of it. Okay, that seems pretty secure. Now, let us pretend that it's seven o'clock in the morning and that's where we want you to... Um, start your time. So we're going to lay it down uh, for where our sun is reflecting. So Simon, maybe you can show us. Now I, we have a lovely uh, shadow. Okay. Okay. Wait, stand out of the way. So I don't know if you can see it. I can't see anything. So we have a lovely shadow line coming up. Okay. From our stick. Okay, a lovely shadow line. Now, we said right now it's 11 o'clock, right? Okay, sorry, we're moving around, so that might be affecting our signal. Okay, hold on, hold on. So we have, um, we need a rock for our time, okay? So, hmm. I just want to make sure it's recording. It's saying I got a low connection. Please let me know. There we go. Sorry if you lost me. It said I had a low connection. So when we look down on our, on our sundial, the stick makes a shadow. And that shadow is what's going to dictate what time it is. It's a shadow move, so is time. So right now, looking at my watch, it's a little after 11. So Simon, you're gonna give me a rock, and you're going to, can you go get me a rock? The reason why you wanna do this at seven, it'll let you get for the whole day um, to measure for each hour. So Simon, my assistant, that apparently is going to um, not get paid very well. Simon, I need one of the rocks that you got me. No, not that rock. That rock is too big. We need one of these rocks. Simon's taking like a huge slab. Um, so, okay. Now let's pretend that it's seven o'clock, okay? So, and this is where our line is. So we're gonna put our rock on, at, on that line, okay? So we've got that. Now let's say we set our clocks, not let's say, let's do this. You're going to set your alarm for, say it's seven, you run out, there's your stick in the ground. You're gonna see where the line is and you're gonna put your, your, um, your rock right at the end of that shadow line or somewhere on that shadow line. Then let's say time moves on, you set your alarm for eight o'clock. You're going to come out. You ready, Simon? You're going to get me another rock. Okay. You just can't get good help anymore. Um, get me another rock. And let's say, and you may want to, and you should mark that. You should mark that rock as your first rock, okay? Let's say you put a little, like a sticker on it. You put some chalk on it and you write seven but it's good to start at seven. We are starting much later, but for our purposes, let's say we start at seven. If you wanted to start now and say that's 11 and then continue for the rest of the day, you can do that, but I would have your science experiment go over two days to make sure you can calibrate or set your sundial, okay? So let's say an hour has gone by, we're having fun, uh, you know, predator hasn't gotten us yet, and now we have an hour. It does seem very inefficient. I mean, who would just have a day to make a clock? But we would, and we notice that the shadow has moved. And at 12 o'clock, we notice where the next line is. We're gonna put the next rock, okay? And you're gonna mark that if you feel comfortable. If you start at seven, you'll know when your first one is, but make sure you know when you started recording your time, okay? We set our alarm again because we really want it accurate. Our time intervals. In science, there are different variables. Fancy word, right? 
So one of our variables is, is time. That's one of the things that changes. That is also the thing that we're trying to measure. So we want to make sure, this is where it's boring and probably people are like <sighs> snoozing off, but we want to make sure that our time measurements when we're collecting our data is accurate, right? Hi, how are you? Um, so you don't want to, you're not going to get an accurate clock or sundial if you are measuring a half an hour and you put one rock and saying that's 12 when it really isn't and then you do an hour and a half and you put that in as one that's not going to give you an accurate clock our time measurements must be very uh pretty exact okay because this is science right it's like baking baking is science we need to be accurate and i don't know why people are blowing leaves but so let's say we set our alarm again for now we had 11 12 and now it's one o'clock. Simon, where's my assistant? That may be, make sure if you are doing your measurements with an assistant, you have your assistant handy. So Simon, I need another rock. It's Simon's first day of spring break. So can I have another rock? So now another hour has gone by. Our shadow has moved. Our shadow line, for us it has not but we're gonna put that down. And ultimately, what you're going to get is you're going to get a bunch of rocks in a circular pattern, right? Running around in an arc. That's what's going to leave you some time. So Simon, I need some more rocks. Again, our, we've set our clock, we've set our timer, our alarm trains let's see i guess that's the 11:15 train and we're going to check our timeline too so um here we go simon i need some more rocks so our alarm went off now it's two o'clock and we're going to read where um our shadow line is good now simon um all right so there we go and we're starting to Oh, you look so handsome. Uh, yeah, those are dandelions and you can eat the leaves. Um, dandelions are really awesome. Um, not everything is a weed, just so you know. It's just weeds are plants you don't want. Um, so I think we, we have to do a, a, an episode on bamboo because I was just in bamboo by our woods. Another thing that uh, is an invasive, uh, an invasive species. But this is what's so cool about our sundial is we're not wrecking with nature. We're working with nature. They can't see you as you're adjusting your flowers. They're not, we're not messing with nature. We're just taking a few things. And when we're gone, our, so, is our, so is our technology. So let us take a look at what time it is. Okay. We're taking a break from setting our rocks down. And now when you're reading your clocks, your sundial clocks, you want to make sure that you're not in the way of the sun. That's kind of why it was really important to make clocks because when you eclipse the light, when you shadow the light coming down, it doesn't work. So right now our clock is saying it's about, what do you think, Simon? About 10 after? Well, let's see. There's, it's, it's definitely after 11. So it's about, I would say it's almost about 11.15, like 11 and a quarter, all right, based on our time slot. So that's pr moving pretty good. Right now, it's pretty accurate, our, um, our clock here, our clock, if you can see it. So it lo it's looking pretty good. Now, our problem is with our other one is we're going to try to show you what it might look like with all the rocks. Now, I don't know how far they're gonna be spacing. I'm just gonna take a guess. But eventually, that's what you're gonna to start to get. I don't know if you can see my stick and my rocks. And that's what we're gonna to have to do a report and see if that is accurate. So, 
For your science project, you are going to make either one or two types of sundials, okay? It's cool to compare which one is more accurate. If you're making the paper one, you're going to print out your graphic, your template. You're gonna get a pencil, um, a straw, some, some either some really thick glue, putty, anything you can grab, and that's what you're gonna stick it in, okay? And leave it on that mark. You could probably take like uh, some foam as well, if you have some weird foam hanging around, stick that in there, and you can move it. But the idea is, it should all be together. You don't want it moving around. You want your pencil to stay in the same place, and you want your sundial to stay in the same place. Because we are using um, a sundial that has the pencil or the stick we don't need to know when north where where, where north is because remember i said i don't know i don't have a compass i was dropped into this place like arnold schwarzenegger and i have no idea where i am but i will need to have a good idea of what time it is so which kind of defeats the purpose of making a sundial that i see the irony in that but um, you need to know what time you're starting so we recommend that every day you with your um, 12 rocks your stick in the ground you're gonna go out on your first day at 7 o'clock and you're going to where you, your stick is already in the ground so you're gonna see where the shadow is and you're gonna drop your first rock the end of that stick shadow that's 7 o'clock every hour you're going to be putting another rock once that's all done and you've gotten, you know, basically your 12 hour a day, do sundials in the Southern Hemisphere run counterclockwise is a question. I, I, I don't know. I don't know, right? No, right? Because the earth is spinning. Oh, that is a really good question. It makes me feel dumb not knowing the answer. I'm assuming, I'm assuming. No, like, you know, it's kind of, that's even a better question than do their toilets spin the other way. I imagine the sun sets in the same direction, right, for them? Ooh, that's a really good question because it makes this question our whole concept of reality, um, which this whole experience has been doing. Good question. Um, if Bart and uh, Adam know, they should, they should definitely tell us. Um, I would think it would all go the same way. I would. I don't know if Christian's still on. He went to the museum where he saw that sundial. Maybe he knows, but some of our science people may know. I would think it goes the same way. I would. I would. So what I would like you to do is keep track. Once you've built your sundials, and so like Katie said, hey, um, on my deck uh, is really sunny. She can make the paper one. And if she brings it in at night, what I would like her to do is, um, they run the same way. Thank you, thank you, that's from Terrence's family. Um, what I think you should do is that every day, pick a set time, meaning if you're going out and you're setting your sundial at eight o'clock in the morning or nine o'clock in the morning, and you set it down, set it down in the same place, Katie, always the same place. Maybe put a little tape if you're bringing in at night, because maybe you've got coyotes or fox and other weird things coming around, and you're taking it in because your word's going to get blown away or it's going to get rained on. Put like a little sticker on the spot or a chalk mark on the spot on your deck so you know that's where you're going to place the center of your sundial and put that down but always pick like a good time meaning a solid even um time like eight o'clock nine o'clock whatever it is and you line up you're going to line up the time so you're going to line up the shadow to let's say you're coming out at eight you're going to line the um the 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 shadow to the eight okay and then that way you can follow it through the day you just can't put it willy-nilly we want to that's one of the other variables we want to make sure we're getting the sun in the same spot if i start moving it around to different places it's not calibrated right it's 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 not that kind of clock so i need to have the same place i need to make certain um certain positives here i'm getting tired of holding this phone so you need set um you need set uh fixed variable so you need the the location has to be fixed every day you need to use the same sundial every day and um 
and you want to keep to that 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 even time so and the same time that you would start every day so let's say you started at nine you're a little bit of a late you know wake up later you want to put your sundial in the same spot on your deck at nine o'clock line it up and then you're going to start to see if it accurately um, measures the amount of time that's for people that have the um the this type of sundial where we're just working with a stick sticking out if we were working with the triangular one the uh gnomon right you know the ones that christian was saying he saw this kind of cool uh, metal piece this it almost looks like a protractor i don't think anybody knows that then you need to calculate where north is and that's going to face north so as i said we didn't know we didn't have a compass I'm not ones for distances, I only know landmarks. So I'm really good at identifying a specific place. So that is how you make two different sundials. We'll have this information also posted up. Uh, I think I could put it up on my Google Classroom uh, for the Monday lesson. Um, so you'll be able to access it really easy. You'll, you'll get all that stuff and you can start making your own. And then keep a notebook, keep a log, whether or not when you went out at 11 on, you know, let's say you were keeping, you were starting keeping track today. You went out at 11 and when you went out at 11, what time did it measure? What time did it say? You can say it was accurate or not accurate. What I think is a really good is get an idea of a reading. So if I went out like right now, um, I'm looking at my sundial uh, I'm not quite, not quite halfway between 11 and 12:30. So maybe mine is saying more like 11:20, um, which is about right now. It's doing pretty good. It's pretty accurate. So write down a number. You know, write down where it's measuring. Okay, and you can use half. You know, a quarter, a quarter past. I don't think most people know how to read analog clocks anymore. Um, but it's a quarter past, a quarter past after 11, not quite halfway, a little bit in between. Is it halfway between, let's say, 11 and 12? Is it three quarters of the way between 11 and 12? That's how you can keep a measurement. But you should be on every day looking at your clock every hour and keeping track, writing in a notebook or on a piece of paper for each hour. What time your clock on your watch says and what time does your sundial and if you've done that throughout a period of time where your sundial is always in the same place um it's always faced the same it's always the placement of the clock has always been set correctly when you start then it will tell you is it accurate or is it not that is the big thing about science it's not just doing an experiment but it's also testing it through time to make sure it's accurate because if it's not accurate then it really is kind of useless uh, for us and uh, and then we won't be able to get out of you know our predator movie um, intact or on time to meet the helicopter that's going to remove us before uh, that weird alien guy blows everything up so I apologize about predator um, references but this is the only thing I could think of on such short notice so Thank you so much for joining us for si uh, science. I was going to say for Simon. I don't know where Simon is. He'll pop in before we go. Make sure you get your supplies to make a paper one or if you're doing one outside. I really recommend that. All you need, Simon, is what do you need to make your sundial for outside? <coughs> Rocks and a stick. Rocks and a stick. Can't get any more simple than that. Rocks and a stick. It'll get you outside. It'll get you some vitamin D. It is a beautiful day. I recommend to start getting your supplies today. Take advantage of things. And as you're doing your record keeping, notice if it is hard to take measurements during certain types of weather. Those are definite disadvantages of using this type of technology, other than the fact that it's probably not very accurate. But two, are you going, are, what kinds of weather can you not get a reading? So if it's raining, that's gonna be a problem. Um, if it's raining with your rocks and your stick, you'll be okay. Caitlin's saying, oh, can you upload a compass app from your phone? You totally can, um, Caitlin. So let's say you're working with a more traditional, you know, more sophisticated um, 
a sundial, you absolutely can use the compass. Um, it's not the same type of compass of what a true compass is. My understanding is that's really more based on GPS, but it's, it's cool. It's all right. That'll tell you where north is, is facing. Um, absolutely, you can use that. Some people really have uh, compasses. I have someone somewhere in my house, but I can't do that. I used to, when I was a Girl Scout, they gave us a map and we were supposed to do map oriented. Uh, it was terrible. I always got lost. Um, and you've never seen Predator, so you're drawing a blank on the references. I apologize. It's kind of a, a, a scary, kind of violent movie, but it's a great movie. And um, yeah, they're kind of stuck in a, in a, in a jungle, um, which would be difficult because probably through all the, uh, the greenery and foliage and plants, they probably wouldn't be able to get a good reading on a sundial. But it was a good survival type of movie. Um, so um, Simon's sitting on a pot that we found somewhere in the woods. So think about things that would make your, the disadvantages of this technology, specifically if it's a cloudy day, how much does that affect your readings or you can't use it at all. So here you go. Find a sunny place, get some rocks and a stick, get an alarm clock, start at seven o'clock in the morning and go every hour till about seven or eight o'clock at night when the sun starts to go down and you'll start to see, will this give you an accurate reading? And then set up your paper one as well. And I bet you could even use it in your house if you have a sunny place by a window. I don't know, that might throw off. Uh, outside is better with direct sun, with the sun kind of coming down at it. So I wanna say thank you so much for joining me for science and putting up with loud cars and trains and I don't know, landscapers, everybody doing their jobs, which is important. We'll have Lunch Bunch at 12.30 today, and then music at 2.30 with Tony. Um, if you have not gotten your schedule for live programming, uh, scroll down our Facebook page. It, uh, You know what? It's not up there. I will put it up. I don't think I put the week's schedule, but today's schedule is definitely up there. Um, and if you want to be added to our email list, you just need to know, send me an email, send it to C as in cat, E as in eagle, A as in apple, the number two, the word Bergen, B-E-R-G-E-N, at gmail.com and we'll add you to our uh, email page. So enjoy this beautiful weather, set up hello again, set up your sundials, it'll give you a chance to say to your neighbors, hi, because they're hi. desperate for human contact just as we all are. So make those sundials, send me some pictures. And there's a baby, I think I woke up the baby. I'm sorry, no, I woke up the baby. <laughs> I, I thought it was really bad being stuck with teenage boys during a quarantine. Maybe a new baby might even be more challenging. That's a little baby, that's a fresh new baby. So send me pictures of your sundials, please, please, please send me pictures of your sundials so we can post them and share them. Tell me, keep records of your data and report in on it. See if it worked. I really want to know. Have a wonderful day if I don't see you again. If not, I'll see you at a later time. Yeah, Katie, this is right up your alley. All right? Science girl for Bergen, weather girl. You got to do this. I thought of you men making this. Jamie, I will see you for lunch as well. Everyone, Alex, um, Caitlin, Christian, Terrence, Everyone that's signed in that I'm forgetting to say your name, have a wonderful morning. Goodbye.